guarantees that tune now. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway. Hi everyone, my name's James Ivy. I'm Paul Drew. From the Studio Rats. Oh, yes. And at some point I'm going to run out of things to bring around. But not for a while. Yeah, you've got um, gear. This is my second ever electric guitar. It's, really? This was your second? That's that quite, a high second. End, quite a high-end second ever guitar. I think mine was a, a Marlin. That was my second <laughs> guitar. And do you know what's special about it? I won it at the London Music Show. Did you? you so, um, you know, as you do when you go around trade fairs, you fill out all the cards and you fill out yeah. um, all the drawers and everything. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call about three weeks after the show saying, Hi, this is so and so from Patrick Eagle. Um, would you like to come and choose your guitar? And I went, Who's this? Who is it? Who's pulling Miss mi Plonka, so to speak? And actually turned out, no, I had chosen, I I'd won a guitar. And I went to the factory and chose that one. Awesome. Why did you choose this one? One, it's green. I guess at the time, <laughs> I guess at the time that was quite a sort of uh, a colour that would have been. No, okay. So first, first and foremost, I love green. I love green is my favourite colour. Okay. So my Yamaha uh, Beach Custom kit is green. Right. That guitar is green. Right. I have a green bass. Um, all my instruments at the time were green. Right. Um, and it. I think is the most versatile single guitar. I, I, I'm not going to say ever created, but certainly that I've ever played. That single guitar, I think, makes more noises than many because of the pickup switching and configuring and stuff. I've got some things to say about that. Okay, can, can I can I say first of all? Yeah. That I thought I was going to hate this. Yeah. And I don't hate it. I've, I think it's I think it's a really good guitar. I think it's it's dated in certain ways. We're going to go through all this sort of stuff. Yeah, but um, it is it is an. I, I mean, I was nineteen when I won that. Wow. Um, so it's over twenty five years old, and I think mm. it's still tonally it definitely holds its own. I think. Yeah. Um, it's a great feeling. Great, nice mm. playing guitar. It was my gigging guitar on ships for ten years. Wow. So it's it's seen a lot of action. It's done a lot of miles, and um, it's awesome. Should you play some sounds? Yes. So so that's the middle position. Yes. It's really bright. It's a very, uh, I mean, for for a mahogany. There's and there's something I'm going to say about that in a minute. Mahogany back, maple top. Yep. Very similar to something else that was being made. What was the something else that could be made? PRS. Yes. Now, I've long held this belief that I think that is the English PRS. I think, I think, yeah, I think Patrick Eagle copied. There's quite a lot of similarities. Now, I think that, I'm sure those at PRS would probably say, that a PRS is a great blend between a Les Paul and a Strat. Yeah, and I would say that's similar, but I think with the PRS, the emphasis is more on Les Paul than Strat, and I think with that, it's more Strat than Les Paul. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about what's. What I like about it. Okay, yep, go, go. Wilkinson brought this out, I guess, was this early 90s, I guess? Uh, well, that's a 25-year-old guitar, so that would make it, yeah. 
Now, the, the way that Wilkinson did this, it made this really clever design where it locks in at the back. You've got this, you've got this little bolt thing. Yep. Now, when the tremolo is in the down position, the tremolo's locked and it doesn't move, which is a brilliant idea because... If you snap a string, you don't go out of tune. Exactly. Well, there's that as well. And also you can bend strings and, and when you bend in the string, the tremolo doesn't go like yeah. that at the same time. But as soon as you lift it up, it then goes into the trem mode. And it's, and it's free floating as well, so you can go both ways. Yeah, which, you know, it was fantastic. I, I had a guitar built mm -hmm. and I use exactly the same trem in that because I like this so much. Um, right, things I don't like about it. Right, go on in. Um, the neck feels like uh, it's very, very narrow. It's very, it's narrow this way. Yeah. So you haven't got a lot of room. I mean, there's nothing you can't do on it. Actually, I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels like, um, you know, some of those Ernie ball necks. Are, it are is a cool. very short scale. Yeah. And it's 24 frets. The body is tiny. People have said to me, it almost looks like a kid's guitar, like a, like yeah. a three quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I don't like, and, well, and first of all, can you explain it to me, this switching system? Okay. So um, normally on a uh, twin humbucker guitar, you would have either two volumes, two tones. Yep or you would have a volume and a tone and a pickup selector. Yep. On this guitar, we have volume, pickup pick selector switch, mm -hmm. and this three-way toggle. Which I think is really good because personally, I don't ever use a tone control. I never ever use tone. I never, never use ever. Tone. So that's a good idea. But if I want to be in, say like I want the bridge to be like full out rock. Yep. <laughs> And then I want the neck to be in a single coil mode. Oh yeah, it's... Uh, quite... I'm gonna have to do that and also do that. Yes. That to me is like, that's too, that's too much faff. Yeah, this is one of the reasons I chose this guitar over other Berlin Pro. This is a Berlin Pro, I think it's a Berlin Pro 2. Um, so you've got three-way selector. Mm -hmm. So you can, ha in the middle position, you've got humbuckers. So you can have obviously front, bow. <laughs> Sounds fat as hell. Forward, it is the outers. Oh gosh, I'm bored already. And then backwards, the inners. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really, you know what this is? This is a great studio guitar. Whoops. Well, actually, it was my, my one mm -hmm. gigging guitar because I could have a Strat and a Les Paul in the same instrument. Yeah, but I wouldn't like the switching. I wouldn't like, it's, it's too much switching for me. I think it's a great studio guitar. Mm -hmm. So construction wise, I'm guessing it's mahogany with a maple top. Yeah. The neck is definitely mahogany. So yeah. it's definitely got that um, PRS sort of vibe about it. I mean, you, you can tell even by the, the headstock and thing, you can tell they really sort of went in. Am I getting that on camera? You're not even getting it. Oh, there it is, a camera. Yeah, point, <laughs> point out the camera, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Facing the screen. Yeah, nice what an one. idiot. Well done. Um, yeah, so everything about it is, you can tell it was inspired by PRS. Yes. Um, do you know what I love about it? Yeah. Ebony fingerboard. I love ebony fingerboards. It is, and when you think, say in 25 years, that guitar has not been refretted. It's been cleaned up a few times. Mm. Steve's done his magic. Steve yep. Guitar Logs, big shout. Um, it's had a new set of bridge saddles. Oh, okay. Um, and that was because I was breaking A strings like I was going out of fashion and yeah. I, I and it was always going there. So I thought maybe at some point it's got sharp or it's got worn down. Mm -hmm. So I replaced the saddles. When I was gigging it a lot, because it's such a short scale length, I put 11s on it. Whoa. And I, could, I had fingers like, you know, like Iron Man. It was ridiculous. Mm. But it's got 10s on now. It's a great feeling guitar. It was my number one for so, so long. Now in the studio, because I'm not playing, you, sorry, you keep smacking it. Um, in the studio, because I can go, right, let's pull, mm -hmm. strap, telly, mm -hmm. but live, there's a, there's a close approximation to all three guitars yeah. there. Is 
yeah, someone great. who doesn't like it, you're pulling your I quite dig it <laughs> space. Yeah. No, no, I do like it. Would I buy one? I probably wouldn't buy one. I don't think I think it's I think it's it's a guitar of an era. Yep. It doesn't it hasn't held the um you know, you know where a PRS from the nineties still looks great, I think. I'm not sure I'm not sure the design of this is is it's 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 a, it's a personal preference. I am biased, of course yeah. I am. Um what was funny was I went to see uh, a friend of mine who I went to college with. Mm -hmm. This is donkeys ago, and it turns out he was uh, had a workshop in Denmark Street. Oh. Uh, Denmark Street in London is Tin Pan Alley. It's the most famous music shop street in probably the world, if I'm totally honest. Mm -hmm. um, and he was making little one watt valve amps. Oh, cool! But he he said, "Oh, you'll like this," and opened up a Patrick Hill Berlin Pro. Oh. In his, and, and so I was like, oh, "Okay, they, they, they do exist." Um, they're most famous two users were Midjure and Nick Kershaw for a while. Both uh, British kind of yeah, good good players. Yeah, oh, both of them. I it say it doesn't get that much love these days. If I'm totally honest, mm -hmm. because I'm not gigging. If I was gigging, that would still be my number one guitar. Right. Yeah. Because it's so ver ver so varied. When 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 I was on ships and stuff, and I was playing drums, bass, guitar, and not able to carry a gazillion instruments. That That's was the one. It's great, isn't it? Should we play a bit more? Go for it. <laughs> That's great. So I'm a child of the 70s who loves the 80s but has instruments and amps from the 90s. Work that one out. It's a really well, it's a really well built guitar, and mm. I can see why you like that. Really <coughs> and nice. you can pick them up online. Every ever so occasionally they will turn up on on the second hand market, and they go for you know sensible prices. Nice. Um, right. it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a hand built in Britain guitar, isn't it? It's nice, yeah. really nice. Well, there really you go. Nice. Well done, mate. On that note, if you got something out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button, and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul Drew. I'm James Ivey. And we'll see you next time.